we are live. Welcome to the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special Review and Thoughts. So, I feel like it's slightly too early to say Happy Holidays. I don't know. Um, I guess I did already say it. So, I'm going to start by telling you this was a movie that I really loved. And there will definitely be some jokes in this video. I am not sure I'm going to get serious. And let's see. That brings us to... Yeah, so... I realize this video is long, I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. So I start this video with a review where I'm either not going to spoil anything, or if I spoil anything, I will verbally warn before I do so, hold up an index finger until I'm done with the spoilers. You can mute and skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. And uh, yeah, um, I will not be warning before spoilers for other MCU stuff. And as soon as I end the review itself, please note the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers, including discussing the ending. So, let's see. Um, right, the, the... I guess I could very quickly look up... So this has the... As far as ratings go... Yeah, um, okay, so Europe D Disney Plus says 12 plus, which I'm pretty sure that means it's PG-13. I, I feel like that's the order in which those numbers go. And so will this video be. And let's see, so the... Lot. Right, and I should say, I've only watched it once, and I got done watching it, I guess, 15 minutes ago, so it's very fresh in my memory. So the plot is that Drax and Mantis want to cheer up Peter for Christmas, and let's see. So yeah, this, this, you know, as far as diversity goes, there's definitely some, uh, the, the representation for LGBTQ people is pretty good. I think, yeah, I think pretty much every race, uh, every ethnic, ethnicity is featured in this, you know, some, some of the... Some people only very briefly show up in this, so I did not, you know, note every single one. But but yeah, I believe there, you know, but yeah, some some people are own some some ethnicities are only represented by extras. So that is, let's see the yeah. So the. The writing. This was written by James Gunn, and yeah, uh, you know, th he also wrote both of the. Yeah, he has written the third. I think they're like in post production on the the third movie, and yeah, you know, he also wrote Dawn of the De the the remake of Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, he's. I'm not sure. He's old enough to have written the original Dawn of the Dead, and he wrote Thirteen Ghosts. Now. I respect the Dawn of the Dead remake, but honestly, I think um, the issues with it are very well handled by Maggie Mae Fish. 13 Ghosts I thought was okay. Um, Deus Deacon liked it a lot better than I did, so, you know, I'm not sure I necessarily have any criticisms of his criticisms of the movie. So, yeah, his, his video... I really love both of the Guardians of the Galaxy, both volumes one and two. And yeah, you know, he manages he manages this delicate balance uh, tone-wise that Oh, oh right. Wow, I did not update this for a while. Uh didn't he also write the I'm I'm just going to 
double check, but I'm like, I'm almost certain that he did also write the... Yeah, yeah, he also wrote The Suicide Squad. And, right, right, I realize he's written other things, but those are the ones that I have watched of the ones that he has written. But, yeah, in the Guardians movies and in The Suicide Squad, he manages this very difficult balance between heart and, like, comedy that is kind of, you know, much of what is derived from these kind of you know, yeah, some of it is from just ridiculousness, but there's also these kind of unpleasant things that, you know, it's, it's, um, it's like Jimmy Carr when he's toning it down kind of thing, you know, there, there are some very, like, you know, some of the subjects and the way they're, they're handled. You know, it is very and and yeah, actually, yeah. The the this one does tone that down. If it's kind of difficult because this is clearly made for people who love the movies. I'm not sure I would show. Okay, I am sure I would not show children the movies like thirteen and up. Sure, but you know there are things in this that could appeal to to it will appeal. To children also, not only to children. You know, it's like with the I Am Groot shorts. Like, if it's the first Groot content, you might be... You know, there are things that you might be confused by, but... Yeah, the, the I Am Groot shorts are very... <laughs> very much made for children. Now, that brings us to the direct... Oh, oh right, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure I would really say there are plot twists in this. It's not really built around plot twists. And yeah, so moving on to the direction. So yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy Volumes 1 and 2 and The Suicide Squad are the ones that he has directed that I've watched other than this. And okay, so according to Wikipedia, James Gunn apparently bugged Kevin Feige endlessly over the years about getting to make this. Not gonna lie, I thought it was the other way around. I thought that Feige went to James Gunn and was like, everyone loves your, you know, the, the whole Guardians thing. Is it possible? Because we have a slot. We have a slot that says holiday special. Is it at all possible that you could, you know, okay, okay, think about it, you know. But yeah. Um, and Gunn also said it was one of his favorite stories ever, and, yeah, the story is as crazy and fun as can be. I was a little bit concerned, so I, I want to, for, for anyone else who watched that and were deeply concerned, this is significantly better than what I understand the Star Wars Holiday Special to be. I haven't watched it. I have no intention of ever watching it. <clears throat> In an interview, James Gunn said that as a child he loved that, and yeah, this is this is way, way better. This is this is I'm I'm not sure there's much of anything in this that's similar to that. Certainly all all the you know I'll, yeah, I'll just briefly, you know, the, the things I've heard people criticize about the the Star Wars Holiday Special include things like it's way too long, there's way too much filler, there's a lot of just weird stuff that isn't, it's not quite, it's not quite Star Wars, but it's too weird for us to not have a reaction, and so our reaction isn't one of, wow, this is an amazing galaxy that's getting bigger all the time, it's, what am I watching? And the the some people have criticized the acting of it as well, especially by the people who are actually in the movies. You know, Harrison Ford, Mark Hamill, and... I can't believe I'm blanking on her name. Um, this is something I will remedy immediately. Her name is, of course... 
Carrie Fisher, RIP. And yeah, you know, the, none of those problems are present here. So I don't know, maybe he was trolling when he when he even mentioned it cuz I feel like that's something the marketing department maybe didn't want him to mention that you know, if you like the Star Wars Holiday Special, that's great. I'm glad you enjoyed it. You know, I'm not here to tell you that you're wrong for enjoying it. Right, and let's see. Oh, right, yeah, it, all, it is also here in the, in the wiki. Wow, I guess I just completely blocked that piece of information because I read this when I copied it in. Anyway, but yeah, um, he... Yeah, Gunn, initi Gunn finished the script in April 2021 after initially writing the treatment years ago. And let's see. Yeah, so <clears throat> this is very heavily. F um, the the two lead characters are definitely Drax and Mantis, and I think. Sean Chandler talks about does a really great job of explaining what the problem with the with the coupling in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two was, and yeah, I agree with him. The, it's it's much much better here. Um, yeah, yeah. I I guess I could briefly. It's it's the power imbalance kind of thing, and here, like you know, Drax is still saying harsh things to Mantis. But, and you see this in, in the trailer a little bit, she's not just taking it or laughing at herself or that kind of thing anymore. Sometimes she will call him out and, you know, criticize him as well. And, uh, yeah, you know, so, so they really, they, they got a great balance there because it is still, you know, he is basically... He, he goes with the first thing that comes into his head. You know, he doesn't really have a filter. He says the first thing that comes into his head. He does the first thing. You know, if he thinks, oh, we should do this, he's just going to do it. You know, he's not going to... Well, okay, if we're going to do this, what we, mu we we have to make sure that we, you know, step by step... No, no, he's just going to do it right away. You know, and Mantis has this... You know, she is... She wants to, to help people. It, you know, it's not that Drax doesn't want that, but, you know, he is perhaps a little bit more selfish. That, you know, and she just, you know, basically, like, as an empath, if she sees something that appears, you know, maybe it's fun, maybe it's cool, maybe, you know, one, one of the, you know, something like that, she's going to be really she's going to be drawn to it like a moth to a flame you know so the, you know that both both have focus issues you might say but it's it's slightly different you know and let's see yeah the the other guardians are supporting players all get something memorable and yeah, some other things that Sean Chandler talks about, mentioned, this is the kind of thing you're going to watch every December. It's very typical James Gunn with his humor, including relatable despite ridiculous and big emotions. And it's not trying to be on the scale of one of the movies. It, it definitely isn't. And yeah, it's just the Guardians being themselves. You know, it's a comedy with at least one musical number, not big action set pieces, and he recommends it to the people that would like this kind of thing. Yeah. So the opening of this is this animated short about Peter's first Christmas in space, and they do a really good job. Like, I, it's, it's basically this thing of, like, um, It's reminiscent of the kind of, let's see, yeah, yeah, IMDb Trivia isn't, doesn't have any information on that, but yeah, it's, it's, maybe, 
I gotta admit, I haven't watched very many animated Christmas specials. I know, I know. But the... I'm, I'm thinking somewhat like... I don't know, maybe I'm way off. What it made me think of was... Peanuts, you know, Charlie Brown and, and that kind of thing. And that does make a lot of sense. Because, like, when Peter was taken, I forget the... I want to say it was, was it maybe 1988 or something like that. You know, it was in the 80s, so they would be familiar to him. And, yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense for it to, to do this. And then the opening titles play over this song that's about Christmas based on a game of telephone understanding and Peter's like trying to correct like it's this band of aliens and let's see if I can get this right everything they've heard about Christmas was something that Peter told Rocket who told Nebula who told Kraglin who told the band so they, they you know it's 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 not an exact they don't th some of the details aren't quite right and it's very funny now I am not gonna give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending the ending fits what came before I think the ending is basically perfect and yeah no Dave Six Machina or other convenient writing and this does have a post-credits scene, so make sure you stay all the way through the end credits. And it's like, I think it's three minutes of end credits, or I guess you can skip them. And yeah, it, I, it never lost my interest throughout watching. And that brings us to the characters. So, yeah, Chris Pratt as... Peter Quill slash Star Lord and the the yeah he he again nails every part of the of the character in the performance just completely that it's exactly what you would uh, yeah and Dave Batista as Drax the Destroyer also just like there's I think by now he could play the role in his sleep. So I'm, I appreciate that he didn't. He, he is putting in effort here. And Vin Diesel is still great as Groot. Bradley Cooper as Rocket also. And Nebula. And just, yeah. Um, in my opinion, for sure, the, the, the best character in this is Palm Clementiev as Mantis. I, they, they really, like... I don't know if, if it was, like, in response to online criticism. C certainly there was some of that. I remember when Guardians 2 came out. Or, you know, if, if Gunn himself, like, he watched the movie again, he was like, oh, that was, you know. But, but yeah, for sure, like, she she's no longer this demure, scared, insecure person. You know, she goes out and does things like if there's a if there's a situation that needs handling she will throw herself into it and yeah you know just let's see and there's a there's a there's an element to hmm Actually, I suppose I should just say, try to avoid spoilers. Even, yeah, I know, I know, it doesn't seem like, it, it, you know, it seems like this is just this insignificant thing, but I would definitely say I'm really, really happy that I, that I didn't have anything spoiled for me. Now, the dialogue is great, like, all of the characters still very much have their own unique voice, you know, th this is the kind of thing where if you heard, oh, okay, they have two distinct voices, but if you read, if someone quoted one of the lines without noting which character it was, you would most likely be able to tell. You know, there, there's a couple of parts where 
people are just you know saying saying completely stock things but most of the time 99 percent of the lines in this you would be able to tell who it you know who would say that kind of thing and yeah there's some really great character development and this is one of those where yeah it's not a spoiler to say we all know by now mantis can influence people so some of the characters in this you know we'll see when they're basically being influenced by her let's i, I saw someone call it mind control is it technically i am not going to be i'm not going to get into that Basically, she, she influences people, and so we see some, you know, there's at least one character in this that we see before she influences them, and then during the, the influence. I'm, I'm not going to give away whether the influence eventually ends. I'll, I think you should only find out by watching, but yeah. And, and just great performance by the person or persons playing the, you know, influenced by, by Mantis. It's just, yeah. And the cinematography is quite good. You know, it, it really doesn't, it doesn't feel like it was just this, you know, thing that, ah, uh, yeah. It does, does it say anywhere? Does not seem to say on IMDb currently, at least, who was the DP. But yeah, you know, it definitely it has really, really impressive shots. Now, let's see, is it, yeah, some some really creative shots that I I'm not sure. If I want to give away, I mean, there's there's an early one where they're they're flying, and we we kind of get a point of view of the ship itself, and you know, yeah, okay, we've seen helicopter shots before, but no, it feels like it's basically a POV of of the the ship. It's it's supposed to be Drax and Mantis in the ship, looking, you know, or or. I suppose not looking directly, but but they know they can tell that something's going on directly under the ship, and the ship is not flying like a helicopter. You know, it actually, yeah. If I had to guess, it's probably drone footage. But but still, it's it looks really good. It it really puts you there. You know, and the editing is also great. There's some great. I've I've said before, editing is one of the most important parts. If you have a piece of, you know, whether it's animation or live action, if you have a piece of filmed comedy, editing can can make or break a comedy. Like, and and and, and that's you know that's one of the things. One one of the if if you find yourself stuck watching a bad comedy, you know, I've found that something that really helps pass the time is trying to pick apart why is it so bad. And, you know, some of the things are, of course, the bad performances. People may be being too hammy, which can ruin even the best of jokes. But one thing, if you're watching a movie that's supposed to be a comedy, but it just isn't funny, try to look at the editing. Because if it doesn't... Like, if it... it yeah, it, it basically has to... Ah, let's see. No, don't don't waste time. Don't don't cut to, into something before the setup is is you know, and don't leave the scene going after the punchline. You know, you can maybe cut to a reaction shot or something, but once the punchline has hit, like if you if we're just watching the people awkwardly standing around after the joke is done, that that can really suck the air out of the room. And they do an incredible job here. They're, they're, the, the editing really helps the, the material. You know, it's, it's very clear that James Gunn is a person who realizes how important editing is to the... And, and I, wish, I wish I could give an editor... There's, a, there's an editorial department on it. An assistant editor to post-production coordinators. Um, 
that seems to be about... Yeah, I mean, that that is a TV thing. You can't always find one particular... Whoever did the editing, they did incredible work here. And... Let's see... Right, yeah, this was actually filmed on location. I mean, I've, yeah, if you've seen the trailer, you already know what I mean by that. I, I will continue to keep it a secret. You know, this is one of those where, if, yeah, don't watch the trailer. It gives away too much. I, I had watched the trailer, but it was still, you know, I, I, yeah, I would definitely say, you know, if you like the Guardians movies, you're almost definitely going to like this as well. You don't have, so, yeah, I wouldn't. Now... So the yeah the the score also does not have a yeah so I'm afraid I cannot credit the person who actually you know but yeah the the score is really excellent and um. Yeah, that's kind of a spoiler. I'll just say there's something really great about the music. Oh, wait, no, yeah, I, I did already mention it open, you know, the, the opening credits play over a musical number. And, yeah, it's it's very catchy. You know, you're going to find yourself, as, as others have already pointed out, you're, you're going to find yourself singing, you know, singing along to it when it's in the, the special and, like, humming it, you know, for the, like I mentioned, it was only 15 minutes, but I could not stop humming the the musical number at the start. So, yeah. And, yeah, this is well paced. It moves pretty fast because it doesn't have a lot of time to work with. But not so fast that you're like, it, you know, you, you don't find yourself wondering, how did we get here? Wait, what was going on with that, you know? The, the That was actually, early on, I was a little worried, oh, are we going to skip right through the, oh, no, never mind, you know, scenes will play out, you know, which is also, you know, yeah, James Gunn doesn't, he's not really interested in, in filler, he's in, he wants a scene to, you know, maybe make you laugh, maybe make you feel, maybe both, but he doesn't really want a scene to just not make any impression on you and yeah that shows here as well so yeah this is 39 minutes without end credits and 42 with and um yeah when it's so short i'm not sure i can really give like um say you know you should watch so and so much before giving, no just it is um yeah, you'll, you'll probably know. Now, yeah, if, if you like the, the Guardians films. Now, the, yeah. The best element of this is the way that Drax and Mantis interact with each other and interact with who or what else they interact with. Um, I'm not sure I have, a, uh, let's see, some negative for the worst aspect. Um, I mean, I, the, 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 yeah, I, I, I have nothing. I, I don't really have any real criticisms of this. All I'm left to do is, is, to, you know, Describe it so you get an idea of if it's something you might like, and try not to just, you know, re ex explain. Um, yeah, go over the entire plot in detail. As what was it, Cavernackle said? Ben Shapiro is from the Guardian School of Reviewing, where you just restate the things that are. You know, you just dis. You just say that then this happens and this happens without really adding like 
analysis or personal, yeah. Um, I guess the, I, I, let's see, other reviewers, yeah, so the, the, um, one thing I did see, I, I saw one person say that, one, one critic say that we don't really see, you know, the, the, one of the best things about the Guardians movies is the, ah, the, the dynamic, the group dynamic between all the, the Guardians members, and this one has at least one new member, and we don't really get a sense of what the the group dynamic, now that it has changed some, is, you know, we, it's, it's, we, we know how Drax and Mantis are now together, the, you know, because, yeah, you know, Drax, he's still saying harsh things, even though, you know, even though she sometimes fires back, but, yeah, let's see, the, um, yeah, you know, that, that was, yeah, I, I didn't find very many negative things in, in critic reviews, at, at least so far, I, I'm not sure all critic reviews have come out, like, like I said, I'm doing this as soon as I can after it came out. Yeah, the thing I was most worried about was that it was just too short and it would feel completely insubstantial. That wasn't the case. It actually, it did make me feel like... Uh, Sean Chandler said that it feels like the Christmas episode of a Guardians of the Galaxy TV show that doesn't exist. And that's very true. It really, it very much feels like the, the Christmas special episode of the... So, so yeah. And, and... Yeah, they, they do a really, really great job. Also, I was I was a little worried that this was going to be inconsequential, but according to James Gunn, it is important that you watch this for for the overall, you know, there, there's not a huge amount of MCU franchise building in this short, or special, but there is some. It, it does, yeah, and, and it is set after the events of Thor Love and Thunder. I don't suppose you really need to have watched that to, to follow this, though. And, yeah, the thing I was most looking forward to was the cast's chemistry. And, yeah, for, for that, it would maybe have been good to have a little bit more of the overall group. But I did really enjoy seeing Drax and, and Mantis together. You know, they, they are two of the most entertaining you know, uh, on their own, if if you don't have, uh, yeah. But yeah, the, the trailer gives away at least a little too much, but ultimately, you know, if you already watch the trailer, you're not going to know everything. And and it, do, it does give you a good idea of what it's like. Now, that brings us to... Rotten Tomatoes, and I'm gonna see what is the... Yeah. It is... It has a 90% percent based on 21 reviews. And... Let's see. So, so yeah. Only two Rotten reviews out of the 21. More of a stocking stuffer than a fully rounded parcel, this Yuletide excursion is a delightful showcase for Drax, Mantis... Oh, right, yeah, I f that also kind of... Yeah, it's kind of difficult to avoid at least one spoiler for, for this, but yeah. And let's see, are there... Um... Let's see, yeah, the... It's fairly positive, and <laughs> yeah, the, the most negative thing in, in the audience reviews on Rotten Tomatoes is not absolutely terrible, but also not required viewing for the MCU, and yeah, uh, ultimately, I don't think you're, you're going to be completely lost if you don't watch it, but yeah, yeah, you know, don't feel obligated, don't, it's, it's a, it's supposed to make you feel emotions and laugh and be happy don't feel like you have to watch it you know i if even if i wasn't going to do a review on it 
I would still have watched this and, you know, yeah, I would still like it. And I suppose that does, it is a perfectly fine time to, it, it's not really something you can watch if you're not familiar with, you know, at the very least, you gotta watch both of the Guardians of the Galaxy movies before watching this or you are going to be completely lost. Like, it does not hold hand, hold the hand of the casual viewer. This is definitely something you you watch if you're already in the, you know but then a lot of christmas special episodes are i'm i'm not sure i know of a of a show let's see the um simpsons had one two and a half men had some can i really only remember wow it it has been a while since i sat down and watched tv and I, I'm not familiar with very many streaming ones that have... Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess those are the ones I can... Well, yeah, the first Simpsons one was also the first episode. So that one you can follow without having watched. But the Two and a Half Men... No, you, you would... You... I guess you'd be able to follow it, but... There's a lot of stuff that you wouldn't be able to appreciate. The jokes are built around you knowing the characters. So, yeah. The And on Metacritic, let's see. It has a 78 out of 100 based on six critical reviews, all of which are positive. Are there any? There are no user ones as of yet. And on IMDb... 30 votes have given it an 8.5 out of 10. And, yeah, 21 of the 30 gave it a 10 out of 10. Let's see, one person gave it a 9, three, per three people gave it 8, two people gave it 7, three people gave it 1? Like, you're allowed not to like it, but a 1 out of 10? I, I don't really understand. I, I if, yeah. I don't have any concrete proof that it's review bombing, so I'm not going to assume that it is review bombing. Let's see. Even if I could perhaps guess why it might be getting review bombed. Anyway. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I mean, I mentioned already there's LGBTQ representation for some people, that's enough. And, right, of the, of the 12 links in the IMDb external review section, nine of them worked, were in English. And, yeah, you know, by the time you're reading, but so far they were all worth reading. And let's see. So yeah, the the special effects, I really don't want to. I'm not gonna make a big thing out of it because we have now heard that uh, you know Disney does not treat the the animators well. Don't don't give them enough time. There were definitely some special effects in this that were a little off the the I, I would say maybe maybe about 20 percent of the time when there is animation you can tell that you're looking at animation and i'm not talking about the the 2d animation peanuts open opening i mean you know for the live action which is you know most of it is live action and yeah you know i'm not i get why they had to animate this stuff. I'm not saying that they could have done it practically. You're going to know what I mean when you see it. But it is still a little unfortunate. Yeah. There's some really great stunt work in this. And I suppose that covers... So, yeah. Um... I recommend this to any fan of the first two Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Can't speak to the third one yet. And just... 
yeah, you know, if you like, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to force Christmas on anyone. You know, I do celebrate Christmas myself, not because of any religious thing, just it's cultural uh, for me and, and my family. Um, none of my closest family is religious. And yeah, you know, if you like Christmas specials, you know, that that is, they sh they almost might as well have called it the Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special. I think the reason it's called Holiday Special instead is as a title reference to the Star Wars Holiday Special, which technically isn't about Christmas. I think they called it Life Day or something. It's a Wookiee holiday. It's not a human holiday at all. So, yeah, um... This is definitely more, you know, if, if you are not someone, yeah, I, I wouldn't rule out, like, if you, if you like the movies, but you don't celebrate Christmas, and Christmas, like, I know that for some people, Christmas is not a fun time, you know, there's, um, there's that, ah, let's see, I'm not 100% sure if Seth McFarlane, let's see, hmm, I don't know if he is or at least was Jewish, but I do think, you know, th there's this, in, in the first Ted movie, he sums up really, well, you know, there's this, let me see if I can find the exact quote. There's a there's a bit of narration explaining what Christmas is. Let's see. So let's see the the ah uh, let's see. I guess ah. Uh, yeah, it does not appear to be here, but but yeah. Christmas is that time of year where all the kids beat up the Jewish kid. You know, so, so yeah. Yeah, you know, if you don't like Christmas, you're probably going to want to stick with, you know, I, I forget if Futurama made more than one, but they made at least one really excellent special that's basically it's a it is a christmas special but it's for people who don't really like christmas it's just you know and yeah there's t um i guess i uh let's see if i just okay yeah they apparently have multiple it does say yeah Xmas Story is one I watched, and that one is really, really funny. And, yeah, you know, me personally, Christmas doesn't mean anything to me as such. It's just, you know, it's it's cultural. We, we, um, let's see. We, we gather presents to express how we, that, that we care deeply about each other. You know, um... Yeah, it's it's just so so to me it doesn't it doesn't bother me when people don't like Christmas the way that I know some Christians get really frustrated. But yeah, if you don't like Christmas, you know, watch Xmas Story, the Futurama episode. If you do like Christmas, then yeah, this this will definitely you know it, it you know. Again, don't show it to, like, children. Yeah, yeah. If you're going to show it to children, make sure that you can explain some things afterwards. You know, the whole, it's just make-believe, and the thing that they did, don't ever do that in real life, okay? You know, that kind of thing. But, but yeah. Um, let's see... Um, yeah, uh, right now this does not have, you know, if you click extras in the Disney Plus menu, it just, it has the trailer, which is also online, but, you know, the, the, um, 
yeah, if you if you are into the MCU, it's definitely worth having Disney Plus. There's a lot of extras for not for all of the movies, but for some of them, there's just a huge amount. Like I have spent quite some time watching, you know, and I think I've I'm not sure I would say that any of it felt like just you know okay that was okay you know no I I've, I've enjoyed watching all of it as well and yeah. Um, let's see, I guess that, oh, right, I forgot to update this thing. I will just very quickly get the updated list. Here we go. Yeah, I, I rank this eight reformed losers, like folks who have lost stuff out of ten. And I am just very quickly going to get... Yeah, so... Uh, let's see. Yeah, I mean, I ended up placing Werewolf by Night in the... In the let's see. Yeah. Um, right, so... My ranking of all of the MCU movies and both of the TV specials. Worst to best, keeping in mind I love all of them. They are all amazing. I'm ranking how much I love them, not whether or not I love them all. Iron Man 2, The Dark World, Th uh, Black Widow, Captain America 1, Thor 1, Ragnarok, Hulk, Ant-Man 1, Ant-Man 2, Love and Thunder, Homecoming, Doctor Strange 1, Iron Man 3, Iron Man 1, The Avengers 1, Age of Ultron, Doctor Strange 2, Far From Home, no Way Home, Guardians of the Galaxy, Galaxy Holiday Special, Volume 1, Volume 2, Black Panther 1, The Winter Soldier, Werewolf by Night, Shang-Chi, Eternals, Wakanda Forever, Civil War, Infinity War, and Endgame. So, the... Yeah, that is it for the review itself. So, let's get into the spoiler section. Which I am just going to note the time code for right there we go. So, yeah, the rest of the video contains spoilers and yeah, so the, let's see, yeah, the, the, so the first section is thus out while watching in chronological order, you can think of it as a running commentary, live tweeting, or the like. And the section after that is thoughts that I had before watching. Anything that I wrote before the... Yeah. Craglin's problem with cleaning the latrines the rest of the year is that's Jeff's favorite job. You can't do that, Captain. You're trying to punish us. You're not trying to punish Jeff. And Drax is the only one to laugh at the story. And, like, even Nebula, I love that, you know, obviously Mantis is upset that he's laughing at the story. But, like, he turns, you know, it's, it's Nebula who, like, stares right in his face and just slowly shakes her head. Like, wow, Drax is just completely he he doesn't read the room he's he's just just yeah i hate stories where everybody lives and rocket and cosmo argue i love that cosmo can just smoothly transition from i refuse to do any more work while you demean me to i want a treat and being this typical happy dog accepting treats and rocket hates giving her treats it's just like I, I'm really looking forward to seeing more of the two of them because that is, you know, and that is, as far as I understand, also in the comics, you know. And yeah, we've seen Cosmo before and Rocket and her haven't really gotten along. You know, the, the, she's in the, one of the, um, she's one of the exhibits in, in nowhere, uh, yeah, in the collector's place and in nowhere, you know. So just, yeah, and, yeah, uh, I didn't feel like the the actress got that much of a chance to to show off. I I you know everyone 
tells me that she is okay. So Ma yeah, Maria Bakalova. Everyone tells me that I gotta watch the second Borat movie because she's amazing in it. And I mean, I do. I am aware of the incident with Rudy Giuliani, which you know led to the the. There's this. What's the word? Um. I want to say ah. I feel bad. I forget which of I, I feel badly. I forget which of the. That's not me being bad at grammar. That's or meant to be at least a reference to. Kiss kiss bang bang. Anyway. I forget which late night host, but one of them, was it maybe Colbert, had the, um, he's also a really great actor, what's his name again, I know him from Raising Cain, John Lithgow portrayed a very drunk Rudy Giuliani, aka Rudy Giuliani, and said, are you a Borat? Because you have to tell me if you're a Borat. So, yeah. And and the... I guess the joke itself is not suitable for 12 plus slash PG-13 audience. So, I will just... Yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that. But, but yeah, the... I, I look forward to more of, of her. You know, because she was great in, in the brief part here. But, but yeah, you know, they're, they're, like, fixing, yeah, yeah, because, I mean, Nowhere was destroyed, at least parts, parts of Nowhere were definitely destroyed. I'm not sure we saw enough to say if it was, like, the entire thing of Nowhere, but, yeah, in Infinity War, so, yeah, you know, and Cosmo has telekinetic powers, it's very useful for for fixing things obviously but she's struggling to aim so so rocket is like what good are telekinetic powers if you can't even aim them and and she's like would you get off my back it's just yeah i i quite liked uh, you know and yeah and the visualization of the telekinetic power you know it's not reinventing reinventing the wheel or anything but yeah it it worked like i could tell oh okay She's using her mind to move those, uh, you know, if they kind of look like boards, I guess, metal boards or something, but yeah. But just, you know, I, I refuse to do any more work while you demean me. Also, I want one of those treats in the bag. <laughs> and the moment that Rocket agrees, she, you know, she, she sits down and, you know, wags her tail and opens her mouth and the, the, the panting, to just, you know, yeah, I, I really, really like that. And yeah, I, I like that, you know, he starts to, to play the, the song and then, you know, take, takes a, a short break and then, and, and Peter's like, that's, that's good, you know, and starts to walk off and he keeps playing, you know, the, the band starts playing again and he's like, oh, there's more. <laughs> Earthlings are so weird. That's true. He's got us there. Let's see. Right, I don't think I got it written down. I, th I think I forgot to write it down, but I really love that Mantis thinks that there are tens of thousands of people on Earth. That's... I mean... Technically, that is correct. There is at least tens of thousands of people on Earth. She's just... She doesn't quite appreciate just how many of us there are but yeah tens of thousands that's yeah that was that was quite funny let's see and yeah let's see we, you know it's revealed you know mantis told the secret to drax which is just like you know she's she's not the best judge of character always she she is like do not tell a secret to drax but yeah you know the the yeah, apparently she is Ego's, uh, uh, yeah, Ego's daughter, Peter's sister, which is, like, you know, it is, it is a, it is a logical, like, it doesn't feel like it came out of nowhere, kind of, th uh, 
I swear that was not an intentional pun, but yeah. Because it technically did come out of nowhere. But no, the, the, the police, not the... Yeah, and the... Yeah, you know, that's part of why she wants to give Peter a present. I really appreciate that that was not in the trailer. I'm glad that I only found out by the... Because, yeah, you know, that is... Yeah, Christmas... Yeah, I, I'm just gonna... I'm gonna blanket say... You know, the... the for people who like Christmas. You know, one of the appeals is this... You know, it's about family. It's about family getting together. And let's see, there was the... Um, right. The... the um, oh, yeah, yeah, that was it, yeah. And the... <laughs> you know, the, the two secrets that she told Drax was that she ate all of the Zarg nuts... And, you know, the Drax keeps being obsessed with the one, you know, the, the, he's, you know, is it, is it true? I am, Peter says, no, about the Zargnuts. And, and, you know, well, we should give him a present. Yeah, we could give him Zargnuts, but you ate them all. Get over the Zargnuts, you know, and just, and I really appreciate, you know, cause, cause yeah, he's. He's being really obnoxious to her, and so she, yeah, she she tells him, you know, drop it. And let's see, yeah, so so they go to Earth, and the ah, let's see, what was the right, right, yeah. So we have the thing of you know, he forgot to engage the stealth mode, so you know he. You know, lean, just tries to sneakily turn it on, and she's like, "I can clearly see you turning it on." Just yeah. And let's see. yeah, and they 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 come across the the cosplayers out in, in public in the in the ah uh, yeah uh, something something square, and you know they don't. See, they don't really understand that these are not the real people, so, you know, Mantis is really excited to see Steve again, which, you know, I mean, we didn't see them spend a lot of time together, but everybody likes Steve Rogers, so it, of course, you know, and, yeah, I'm sure that she did hear that the, you know, that, that he... Oh, hold on. Actually, no, no, n never mind. It's not necessarily that she knows that he retired, but she hasn't seen him since Endgame. And I, I'm not sure how long it's supposed to have passed. But, but yeah, you know, she's, she's excitable. And, yeah, they, you know, lots and lots of selfies. And, you know, once Mantis is no longer... Checking on him, Drax does beat the GoBot, and they're looking for Kevin Bacon. They go into this LGBTQ bar, and you know, Drax doesn't dance, but he is happy to drink with this, you know, other. Yeah, I'm not gonna assume. I'm gonna go ahead and say, you know, they. Drax and they drink and the the but but yeah Mantis of course dances and yeah the the he does like getting his characters into into bars and and dance clubs and such getting them drunk getting them dancing yeah um let's see. but but yeah I really appreciate you know Drax, the big masculine man who solves his problems with his fist, and he's so, you know, he's so cool and so tough. You know, he doesn't have, he at no point does he seem to have any problem with the, you know, yeah. I, I don't know. I felt like that was James Gunn telling, you know, because 
a number of the people who watch these, who watch the MCU stuff, are, you know, men with very, very limited ideas of what masculinity looked like. And, yeah, I feel like James Gunn is saying, you like Drax? Drax is perfectly fine with the LGBTQ community. He has no problem with them, you know. And, and I mean, I'm sure to them, you know, they, they don't look any stranger than other human beings do, but that's just it. Why should we think that they're stranger than other, you know, they're, they're, they're different, you know, um, they, they, ah, crap. They are, they have a number of LGBTQ people dress in a way that makes it very clear that they're not straight or cis, but that's not a bad thing. That's just them expressing who they are. And yeah, why is that? Why is, why is that somehow lesser or other or worse? You know, so yeah, that was, I quite liked that and you know they they yeah they straight up they 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 don't find a single person in there that can tell them where Kevin Bacon is but there's one of those maps to the stars people and you know she's like oh yeah I can tell you where Kevin Bacon is and you know reaches the the map to to Mantis and I, f I forget how much money but it, 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 you know some money for it and and Mantis is like I don't know where I left, where where my money is, and the maps of the stars lady just pulls away the, you know, and then the the mantis grabs her, her arm and says, "You will give me the maps to the stars. Here you go. You will give me all of your money." <laughs> Which is one of those things where the the parents are gonna have to tell, "Don't, don't. Even even if people want to give you all their money, don't take it. They might need it themselves, you know." And. Kevin Bacon watches Santa Claus Conquers the Martians without a riff on it, which, I mean, I do that. I didn't know anybody else did, but I guess James Gunn probably also does since he put it in the, in the movie. But, yeah. The riff is great also, though, but, yeah. And, you know, the, the yeah, so they, they get to the the front and mantis makes the mistake of verbalizing her plan before she's completely you know she says could you toss me over toss you over and he immediately does it and she's like i meant when i was ready toss you over don't toss you over make up your mind <laughs> yeah and the I, I really enjoyed watching Kevin Bacon fleeing the the duo and Malcolm is jumping. Ugh. Wow, Mantis. That's because I just recently talked about Jessica Jones and there's a character there named Malcolm. Anyway, and I you know I'm I'm going off paper notes at this point, so I just write the first letter. Anyway, Mantis jumps between. I, I'm just going to call them columns because I feel like that's descriptive enough. And that's maybe where you could kind of tell, okay, that is not quite real. That's animation. You know, Groot was another case. And let's see. And, and you know, Drax left behind the funny man, the little funny man. And, you know, Mantis is like, uh, would you rather have, you know, be be a good friend to Peter and make him, you know, give him the perfect gift, make him happy, or have the little funny man? And Drax, again, just completely un unable to, you know, he just says, I, I want the little funny man. <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, yeah, some of, for some of this, like, Mantis kind of has, like frustrated parent or teacher energy like she's trying to teach this kid the value of certain things and she, she you know she makes it like it, it legitimately that could have come from a teacher 
would you rather this really amazing thing or would you rather this thing which is you know and the kid still doesn't get it and it's like oh my wow you know just yeah and you know, and and the, you know, he's like, well, it's not fair that you get to keep your, you know, yours. Well, I was responsible and didn't leave mine behind. You know, just really, really parent slash teacher energy. Just you know, if you were a good little boy and did what you were told, you would still have the little funny man. But now you don't, and you have nobody, nobody to blame but yourself, young man. Just you know, and and the. And then he says, you get to keep your funny man. This isn't a man. Well, what is it then? It's a, it's a shape, you know, just, which is actually a kind of good, like, let's see, that, that's one of those things that are called candy cane. Like, yeah, if you don't know what a cane is, you know, it, it looks, I, I really appreciated her using it in the fight scene. That was really, really fun. And let's see. And Drax laughs when they fire bullets at him. And like on some level he might actually think because he doesn't he doesn't I, I don't really get the vibe that he's like, ah, you puny regular you know human guns, you can't hurt me. I I think he thought they were intentionally tickling him like oh this is so much fun. I can get down at Christmas. I'm getting tickled by these tiny little things. You know, that's funny. And Mantis defeats the cops. Some punches punching and kicking, but also some using the empathic ability to this, yeah. You can really see how, like, she is a full-fledged Ravager. She can fight. She can use her powers in this very distinct, you know, he, she doesn't doesn't just make people feel things really strongly. She will put you to sleep if just, yeah. And, yeah, they've they finally managed to, to catch Kevin Bacon and put, you know, they, they yeah, at, at first... Again, have difficulty controlling him, but Mantis, um, yeah, uses the empathic ability to get him to to get onto the ship with them, and he's just smiling and just you know, I I really Kevin Bacon did a really great job, really good performance in this. I you know I like him in general, but yeah, he he was really really good here. And it turns, you know, at first, you know, the, the, they do the thing with, you know, because, like, well, yeah, you know, uh, historical archives, obviously, so mm, we need your help. But then they do really, you know, they do understand the concept of actors, and they despise them. And the, the let's see, would it have been funny... If Drax said the only thing worse than an actor is a wrestler, because you know he did only start acting, at least like for serious more recently, he used to be a, a wrestler. And, you know, that's perfectly fine. Peace be with that. That's, but but yeah, um, but it, you know I I believe Pom Klementiev is an actor. And what was the last? Was was Nebula maybe also one who said? And Karen Gillan is an actor. She's been in a ton of stuff. So it is kind of funny hearing her saying, you know, that actors are terrible. But but yeah, and and you know, she Nebula is worried that Peter, you know, she thinks that he didn't realize that Kevin Bacon is an actor and not a hero. So she tells him, okay, be a hero. And first he thinks he. So yeah, first he thinks, oh, uh, British guy fighting Nazis, you know, and then Batman, which, I mean, at this point, it is just canon. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Batman is a fictional character, pl plain and simple. You know, the, there was the, ah, let's see, what was the other one? Eternals had a character reference. Yeah, Eternals had references to both Batman and Superman. But, yeah, the, the, and let's see, yeah, and, and they play music to get Peter 
outside in nowhere and all the lights come on and yeah you know for at at first peter does like it seems to really lift his spirits that you know there's all this christmas stuff and everyone is there to celebrate even the people who didn't like the music at the start i think and peter approaches the the present box which you know i i like you know groot wheels it in and then afterwards he's like i am groot Oh yeah, sure. You thought the whole thing was a bad idea from the start. I just saw you wheel the box, and you know, just and you know, yeah. At first, like Peter's like, "Wow, that's such a big box. I wonder what they got." And then it's moving. Oh, oh no! You know, <laughs> and that's also you know, Peter in in these scenes has very strong, frustrated dad energy. Like it's. Okay, I, w I want you to slowly explain to me what it is you did and and where you put the... Because Daddy might need that thing now. Um, so it's really important that you tell me exactly what you did with that thing before Mommy comes home. That's that's very important, okay? You know, just, just really... Yeah, and, and it's, it's kind of appropriate, you know, Christmas... It, you know, can be fun, but it can also be really stressful. So Mantis and Dra uh, Mantis and Peter are the stressed out parent teacher. You know, and let's see. Yeah, you know, Peter realizes the box is moving, and you know he comes close enough, and you can hear Kevin Bacon. Hey guys, I'm about to pass up. There's uh, pa pass out. There's um, no air in here. <laughs> And because of Mantis's mind control, he's still just like he's he's not really unhappy about it. He's just kind of stating, um, so no air. Uh, you did not put any air holes in this thing. I I don't know if Peter maybe didn't make it clear to you that humans need air to breathe. We we kind of need that to to live. Um, can anybody maybe get me out before I? pass out maybe causes some permanent damage you know just completely cool and and calm it's just yeah you got me a human being as a present this isn't a christmas gift it's human trafficking <laughs> and 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 this yeah just like i feel bad for laughing but it is really funny it is a very funny misunderstanding and released from Mantis's effect, Kevin, of course, freaks out. Don't worry, no one's gonna hurt you. Huh, a talking raccoon. Nobody calls me that. I'll kill you! <laughs> Go get Kevin Bacon. Don't kill him! <laughs> I feel like that's probably... I, I think everything Peter tells Nebula to do always has to include don't kill anyone while doing it. And and that was also you know a nebula chases him like you cannot escape me Kevin Bacon and Craglin being the voice of reason will never not be funny to me and like you know he you know he's sitting there he's about to to get Kevin back to Hollywood you know and just yeah he's just calmly calmly explaining the you know this whole thing of you know yeah he just he thought you know they thought it would make peter really happy and just and kevin actually receives a call from i um his partner i'm gonna go ahead and go with i think her name was kira and yeah you know he's like how do you how do you get reception here and what was it? We have like 400 satellites pointing, so we can pretty much get, uh, uh, what was it? Get signal from anywhere in the universe. And yeah, Kevin does agree to go back and he performs. I, I don't know if it's an original song or what, but yeah, you know, and as, you know, ah, James Gunn pointed out in an interview. You know, Kevin Bacon can sing. 
it, it is something that you can ask him to do, and he can actually do so, you know. And we get a montage of all of them gifting each other, and Peter gifts Groot a Game Boy. We know that he likes handheld games, so it does make a lot of sense. And let's see, a Game Boy... Uh, so, again, I believe it was 1988 that he disappeared... Ah... Uh, Nah, let's, let's see. It says here, it was first released in Japan, 89, so... But he did go to... He was on Earth during Endgame, so maybe he bought one there. And I might also be wrong about 1988, but anyway, yeah. You know, it, it does make a lot of sense for, for Groot to, to get that. I gotta admit, the moment that I saw the smile on his face and him start to move, I was like, is he gonna think that it's like... I don't know, you know, maybe like a, a bouncy ball or something and, and break it, but no, apparently not. And Nebula gets Rocket Bucky's arm. See, half of me is terrified to even ask how she got that. And half of me is intensely fascinated with how she got that. Yeah, I'm I'm going to have to I um I'm not entirely sure where I come down for for now. And and it's I think it's the vibranium one, so it is like cuz cuz you know that would Oh, no, yeah, never mind. Yeah, cuz the old one got shot off with with Tony's chest beam from the Yeah, yeah, there isn't the th that is the only one that there is. And like I mean Bucky didn't retire or anything, so yeah, he had it last we saw him. And even Nebula dances, although she's maybe a little, like, it's not the most, like, out there kind of dance. But, yeah, you know, she, even her, she does dance. And Cosmo's so happy to gift Kraglin, one of those little creatures that we saw in the two Guardians movie. You know, in, in the, yeah, in the first one, it's fighting... I forget if it's fighting one of its kind or if it's fighting a different alien. I guess maybe a better... Yeah, and they're, like, betting on it, uh, you know, at the, at the casino. The, the, scenes, the, the scene that culminates in Rocket getting angry at everyone. Um, let's see, before there... Other than that. At the start of the second movie, Groot fights at least one of them... Does he maybe also ride one of them briefly for the musical number? I, I forget. It's been a while since I watched it. And in return, Kraglin pets Cosmo, and she is very receptive to that. I, I really, really appreciate that. Because that is the thing. Like, if I understand... I, I don't think I've read a comic that has Cosmo, but... Yeah, you know, super intelligent. She can communicate telepathically. She has telekinetic powers. But she's, she's also a dog, you know? She likes pets. She likes treats. And Mantis gifts Drax a little funny man. Let's see. And Groot made paper mache versions of situations during the special. And Kraglin gets this meta gift of him holding the the figure that he's holding, 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 holding. So yeah, that's that's quite a good. And Nebula graces us with the epic line. Wow. I guess all actors aren't complete pieces of shit. Wow. I really, I, I'd like to believe that there almost, there must be some outtakes of Karen Gillan barely getting through the line before cracking up. Like, it is, it is a very funny thing to have an actor say that actors are, are terrible. You know, I, I quite liked it also when it happened on Two and a Half Men. Where it was also like it, they said it multiple times. Let's see. Um, okay, yeah, I. One of the things that made it so funny on Two and a Half Men is that the character saying that was saying, "I would never date an actress because all actresses are insane." 
to the actress that in real life he was with at the time. And she responds by saying, I don't know if they're all crazy. You know, maybe there's, you know, and he's like completely just, you know, so, so yeah, that was also very funny. And let's see. Yeah. And, you know, we have, we, we, the last live action bit is Mantis and Peter. And we see the animated shorts real ending. Yondu opens his gift and it's the little figure he glued to the control panel. And Yondu got Peter the pistols that we frequently see him use and clearly really love. So it's, that's great. You know, when you're, when you're doing a prequel, which the animated short technically counts as prequel, you know, it's, it's good if you can add more meaning to something that, you know, so, so yeah, you know, um, Yondu, Every time he sits and flies, yeah, he can see the, the, you know, that little figure. And he actually, he got a bunch of them, you know, by the time we first meet him in Guardians 1. So, wait, does that mean that maybe, like, every year Peter got him one? But they kept it secret from the other Ravagers. They kept it secret from the other Ravagers because... Yondu doesn't like people knowing that Peter, you know, he has a soft spot for Peter. He's he's a little, you know, he's he's he doesn't like people knowing these kinds of things. So so yeah, straight up he and he maybe gave Peter some of the other things over the years that he, because Peter has a lot of equipment when we first meet him. Guardians one so so yeah you know it that's a, that's a great yeah let's see yeah Mantis tells Peter their siblings you know she she really struggles to get it out she's she's very very nervous but eventually she does get it out and man and you know he says Mantis that's the greatest Christmas gift I could ever get and you know he has always been lonely and that was actually. His loneliness was the thing she was trying to, you know, she she doesn't understand enough about like complex emotions to say, you know, you you can't, you know, if if let's hypothetically say that Kevin Bacon, you know, replace Kevin Bacon with just a, you know, a a present that Peter would have liked, you know, that still wouldn't, you know, it might distract him, but you know, he feels lonely. He has lost both of his parents. And, you know, technically, I think an argument could be made that he lost his father twice. You know, first by not knowing him when he was younger, and then by, you know, being one of the people killing Ego near the end of Guardians 2. You know, so, yeah, you know, finding out he has a sister, you know, makes him feel... Yeah, you know, I, I really thought that was a that was a very clever, uh, yeah. And we close on Yondu and Peter happy together. And there's like a, a Christmas greeting written and we the post credit scene where, you know, poor group. Because they don't have trees on nowhere, you know, it's it's not really that kind of so so. Groot's the Christmas tree, and Cosmo and Rocket are both, like, sticking stuff on Groot, who's got his arms out, you know, he's T-posing, and, yeah, eventually his arms get tired, so he lowers his arms, and a bunch of the stuff falls off, of course, and Cosmo goes, Groot ruined Christmas again, and... Rocket says, now we gotta have another special, and turns and breaks the fourth, you know, just makes eye contact with the camera and the audience, so that was, yeah. And, you know, I mean, I'm not sure that we're gonna get more, as far as I understand, James Gunn is not doing any more MCU stuff after Volume 3, so, you know, but... I mean, there's, there's, there are other characters that you could do this kind of thing with. 
Um, I think I'm just gonna make, I don't have very much in the last section, so I'm just gonna put it here. So, yeah, um, let's see, yeah, about a month ago, you know, the trailer, it, you know, came out, and it really reminded me of the times where Star Trek would take the crew to Earth in the decade that that particular story was made, which I don't think I will go into right here. I'm just going to say it happened more than once and in more than one decade. And yeah, you know, in those cases, they got some fun out of the present day stuff. And yeah, you know, in in this special also, you know, they, they did some. And I, I don't know if Star Trek still does that. I don't watch New Trek. I, I'm not sure I... <sighs> right now, I have no plans to, to get into New Trek. Now, let's see the... Yeah, and, you know, this has the band, let's see, the, the old 97s, and the, let's see, right, I, yeah, I just remembered, the, in the first song, the, you know, at the, at the start, they, they sing something about Santa's elves, and it cuts to an elf, and they're like, what, or, uh, wait, an el elven? I, I don't, I'm not good at the terminology in English, I, but, but yeah, you know, something like, it's, in Danish, the word for, one of Santa's elves, let's, let's see, I guess you would say, Nisse, or is that the, anyway, and we call, call elven people, Ilva folk. so, you know, for me, I, I don't, yeah, anyway, um, yeah, you know, the, the old 97s made, I'm, I'm not sure if both the start and the end are original, but yeah, at, at least the, the start one, you know, I don't know, would it have been too obvious to have Weird Al Yankovic do it, and his alien version would be normal alien, like Al, yeah, Yankovic, I don't know, you know, he is my go-to for parody songs, and he has made some incredible Christmas songs that I'm not sure the children should listen to. So yeah, but no, it it was it was good. Um, I don't know. From from me, you're not gonna you're not gonna top Weird Al Yankovic as a as a parody. So, you know, I will say um, Bo Burnham and I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. His his YouTube channel is Paint. But he also uses the, the, what name is, ah, uh, let's see. It does not say right here, ah, crap, I know, I used to know his name. Right, John Cozart, and yeah, you know, the two of them have definitely written. I, I'm quite fond of After Ever After, the those three, and I think John Cozart also did a great job with, you know, he 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 did one with. Um, Melinda Katz, as he called her, Grace uh, Helbig, if that's how you pronounce that, and Elisa, ah, uh, I can't believe I'm blanking on her name, Eklund, Elisa Eklund, but, yeah, you know, obviously I'm not expecting them to, to be in this, but... No, they, they did a really great job. The the old 97s were really funny in this. And I appreciate that he did make, you know, he did get them into alien makeup. Because it really wouldn't have made sense. The, you know, the concept is they don't really know these things. So they're just, uh, yeah. And, yeah, you know, some, some really funny stuff in the in the lyrics. Santa is a furry freak. Let's see, if you don't leave out milk and cookies, he'll put dung in your 
Christmas stocking and all, all these, you know, and Santa has a flamethrower and all these things. Just, yeah. And, you know, James Gunn appreciates some of the funniest stuff in, in a comedy movie, or in this case TV thing, is the reaction. So he keeps going to Peter Quill, like mortified that they are you know that this is what they think christmas is you know now we the viewer know that it's messed up to kidnap a person and use as a christmas person but there is slavery in the guardians of the galaxy movies so of course drax and mantis wouldn't understand i really appreciate yeah and I, right i saw someone saying that the they thought the idea of you know these characters stealing i can't believe i'm blanking on his name uh kevin bacon as a christmas present they thought it was too silly i loved it i thought it was a, an excellent you know and it it comes so organically out of the the movies it is exact you know mantis is the exact kind of person who would be passionate about you know bringing christmas cheer to peter Drax is the kind of person who would come up with... Because cause it's like, it's the most obvious kind of thing, basically. You know, the the he's always talking about uh, Kevin Bacon, the great hero. So, yeah, you know, that... Let's see. And, and it is, like, it's this sort of childlike idea of, you know, like, saying, you know, if, if we... He, you know... He likes this person. If we get him the person, the, you know, the, the, like, um, what's the word? Like, you know, children think, you know, I, I like that person. I'm going to be with them, you know, and then some people who don't mature past these childish ideas might, as a teenager or even adult, still think, I like that person. I'm going to force them to be with me, but you know, hopefully eventually they will mature. That is it for the video. So hit me up in the comments. Let me know what is, what was the best part of this special? What is your favorite, doesn't have to be a Christmas special, but just holiday special or one-off episode of, of something. Yeah. If you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell, like, it is a police officer trying desperately to come to poor Kevin Bacon's aid. There should be a link to my main channel page, one, two, or more links to stuff like relevant playlists. I suggest a video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week, reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie, and one talking about my spoiler thoughts on the most recent episode of the current Disney Plus Star Wars show, which these days is Andor. And recently, the Review and Thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if you want videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog as well as catch my video next week. You know, keep in mind, I have done a video on every single MCU movie and all of the Disney Plus, you know, shows, one-offs, shorts, you know, everything that is... Ah, uh, uh, hold on. Everything live action and also, I don't know if, a, I guess I Am Groot doesn't count as live action, does it? Because it's all animation. Anyway, yeah, you know, everything live action that is in continuity with MCU, I have not. I am working my way through Marvel Netflix and then I, I will definitely do Star Wars animated, animated, you know, yeah, animated Star Wars before I then you know, go back to Marvel and do the Marvel live-action TV shows since, as far as I understand, none of those are continuity, none of them are getting sequels, uh, you know, that is not in the cards right now at least, so I don't feel any great rush to get them where animated Star Wars is getting sequels, you know, the... So, so yeah. Anyway... I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I will catch you next time.